Let's get our patient in the treatment room. So we're going to use um, Restylane Refine to resurface the lines and the volume loss. So what people don't know is that you get, imagine these lines, we call them the barcode lines. People think, oh, you have to be a smoker to get them. You don't have to be a smoker. You can be just somebody who's really expressive using those areas. So you can be both. It doesn't really matter. But if you look at men, they can smoke 100 years in a, every day of their life, they'll never get those. Why? Because their skin is that much thicker. And so what happens is that you lose that interface between the skin and the muscle. And so the skin just sticks to the muscle. That's what a wrinkle really is. So if you can restore that zone, you can help that wrinkle. You don't want to just fill it. You want to kind of go about it in different ways. Ready? Yes. All right, come on in. This is Maria. Come on in. All right. Yeah. Good. Let's see. Can you see? Should we move you? Yes. Do you want me to turn this off? <laughs> Maybe. Or I can just turn off my computer. There you go. Okay, good. This is Maria. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> so what we talked about is she's got very pretty lips. We're not going to talk about the lips. Purse your lips. Go like this. She's got these little lines that happen with time. So in order to help them, we're not going to focus on the lips, but we're going to restore the area above here. Sounds good. Let me scoot you a little bit there, that way it can not be in the way. So I like to numb the patients, put a little bit of topical cream on. Tonight we're going to use Refine for that area, if we have to do a little bit the other areas will extend. This is the new elastic product that we talked about. The, these fillers come in uh, syringes. I put everything together first and then I like to clean up the patients. I'm a little bit OCD, and so I use a combination of alcohol and Hibic cleanse. One, because you never want to get an infection, not that you would, but because so many patients are getting so many injectables that you can build up what we call a biofilm. So the bacteria can just kind of be dormant in there, and so you don't want to risk that. So my patients are always crying because they put alcohol all over their eyes, but they're glad for it afterwards. Okay. The lips tend to be the most sensitive area of the face. You'd think that the eyes are, but they're not. They don't have a lot of nerve endings. Mm -hmm. But the lip areas do. That's why it's kind of the central part of the face. So when you get dog bites and little kids, they always go for this area. Mm -hmm. They know that it's the most functional part of the face. Good. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. So we're going to focus mostly on the top on the areas that are bothering her. And what we're going to do is go just above the lip line. Little pinch. The importance of this is to go slowly because that helps with the pain and it also helps with minimizing bruising. So 
swelling. And all you did was kind of fill out that little area here. This is refine. Hmm? How does it feel? Yeah. Not too bad? No. Okay. So these fillers all have lidocaine in them. So once you get the, after those couple little injections, they tend to numb up pretty well. So then you can really go back and kind of finesse the areas where you felt like you didn't inject enough. And these are the dynamic ones. Remember the gooey ones that come down? So you can see how natural she looks, but much softer and without having that downturned area. Press your lips. Mm -hmm. Much softer. You don't need a lot to do this. You're better off doing a little bit at a time than doing too much. And the most important thing, look at patients in animation. Make them purse their lips. Make them smile. You okay? Mm -hmm. And how long does this last? This lasts about six months. Anytime you inject a filler where there's a lot of motion, like the mouth, it lasts less. If I use the same product in the tear drops, it could last a year or more. But if you put it in an area, and the more dynamic you are, It's very, very soft. Is that all one syringe? Still one syringe. How does it feel? Good. Not too bad? No, not bad. Give me your purse. Got a little bit right there. Purse again. Okay, good. So then you can kind of chase after those lines that are still residual and go a little bit more in this direction. Mm -hmm. But it's such a soft, elastic product that you're not going to get those lumps and bumps like you do with the other fillers. First your lips. Is it nice? <laughs> she was scared. She said, I don't, I don't want big lips. No, she didn't want big lips. I said, we're not doing the lips. That's what a lot of people say. Oh, I don't want big lips. Well, we're focusing on the areas outside of the lips and it's very hard to dis um, define that to patients until you do it. So I used 0.7 out of a one cc syringe. So then we can focus on the bottom because I don't think we need to do right now anymore. So then I have you spread the lips just a little bit. No, perfect. And then I just hold on to it a little bit. Baby doses, we can always add more, I know. Those of you who know me, I always say the same thing. Unless you can't tolerate recovery time, come back. We always add more. I 
And these products are really hard to actually push through these baby needles. <coughs> They're tiny, tiny, which is actually a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. So very soft. You don't want to overdo. Well, you can overdo it if you want, but that's not a requirement. So then I feel for everything. If there's anything that I want to get. It's a little bit like being at the dentist office. Mm -hmm. Give me a smile. Pretty. Thank you. You're welcome. So the last thing we can do a little bit to the nasal labial folds, a little bit to the mental crease there. Hmm? Okay. And so <laughs> she's not going to say no. No. <laughs> So a little bit, so we'll use the slightly uh, less elastic, slightly thicker product, which is the D-Fine for those areas, because this one was a little bit finer. But same thing, it's elastic, so it allows the motion. You can see how much motion she has, even though she's just been injected. question. So the FDA approves fillers and whatever other agents in certain areas and certain indications. We as physicians are not required to listen to that. It's a recommendation. So pretty much everything that we do is off-label. As long as it's safe. For example, in Europe, you don't have a, uh, an approval for the nasal labial folds. You have approval for the treatment of fine lines and wrinkles, wherever they may be, which I think is the more appropriate indication. Mm -hmm. Here, the FDA is so specific, you can't get approval until you really focus on one area. So it really limits the approval, but that means that everybody does their treatments. Um, Offline, off service. Okay, so see how her line is a little bit darker here than here. Typically, the left side of the face tends to be the weaker. And it may be that, do you sleep on one side versus the other? Yes. Which side? Come uh, <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't punch that side. <laughs> she's in great shape because she's a fitness yeah. trainer. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to start on the side that's more severe, a little pinch. Okay, I kind of tent it up as I go along so I can see where I'm going. Thicker product, so it's easier to fill, and then you just smooth it out. The lips are very different. And I should say that this line has been approved in the rest of the world since 2011. Wow. So we just got it. Canada got it last, last year, yeah. So pretty much everything that we've gotten has already been tested in the rest of the world for a while. So very much softer, but not effaced because you don't want it to look unnatural. You want it just to look softer. You want to look? A 
little bit here. The massages are the worst. Mm -hmm. Last little bit here. I would think if this is more elastic that it would last longer than six months. Good question. The studies were only done now to six months. So again, it's all these weird um, voluma did their studies out to 18 months. So that doesn't mean that the other products don't. It's just that there's no data. That's why it's a very... The indication for the refinement comes mm -hmm. for one year, actually. One year, one yeah. Year. yeah. <laughs> but it's such a pretty product. That unless you have a really a need for filling deep, then I would use lift. Like for example, the cheeks. You're not going to lift the same amount, but if you're going to lift deeply, and then superficially you still need volume, you're going to put something like this so it can still move, mm -hmm. and be really, really natural and soft. And you're not going to see anything. Very, very soft. So that's the, the beauty of these products. So you're not going to look like that weird flattened face that you always think of with fillers that doesn't move normally. How did it feel? Not too bad? No, not at all. Beautiful. So that was two syringes. So you can imagine, it's not, it's very, very natural. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right, we'll get you some ice. So Maria was, this is the first, the second time she's gotten injected. She's a baby, <laughs> so she's very brave to do it. We're gonna do Kybella next, if we can get Jean. Any questions? So these products are really beautiful. They're very soft, they're very gentle. It's very hard to describe other than through the elasticity and the fact that it really simulates your own natural tissues, how they behave. Because before it was like jello and putty. Yes. Kybella? Um, Bella Taro? Different. You can use Bellaterra there. The issue, uh, Bellaterra is very, very thin of a product. It doesn't last very long. So it's less longer. Much longer. Okay. Right. And it's much more soft and natural. Other question? Um, it wasn't about this product. Yeah, it's OK. Was that a prior question? Was mm -hmm. something asked you about the fat? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You said something to the effect of 40 to 60% of last. Yes. The fat cells that don't last. Mm -hmm. Do they turn into like a pop? I mean, what happens to them? Good question. So it's age dependent, we believe. Ah, okay. So younger patients tend to retain their fat better because the fat reten retention rate is dependent on forming blood vessels to allow that fat to live. So younger patients tend to retain it. Uh, longer, so they have fewer um, issues with the way that the fat feels. 
as you age, that fat, what we believe is that the stem cells in the fat kind of skew their propensity to become other cells. So they can become more fibrous cells, more bony cells, so you can get more scarring and more kind of balls in that area. I'm because I hadn't heard of fat being used on the face like that. Mm -hmm. In the face, we use it all the time. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much standard of care uh, for volumizing and f during the course of facelifting. Um, so that's an expected thing. But if you're, let's say, 80, if you put it in there, you have a, a much higher risk, one, of it not taking, and two, of forming scarring. But we use it also in breasts, and obviously that's what the BBL is, the Brazilian butt lift, where you put fat in the, you suction it other areas, and you place it in the buttocks. So it works very well. You just have to do it in the right patient at the right time. <laughs> Good question. That's what my research is about. But no, you can't transfer it. Okay. Uh, Too much of an inflammatory reaction. Okay. Won't stay. A thought. Shall we? All right. So some of you know Jean. How many have we done? Two. Two? So this is... Because I didn't even have really much of a response. Remember, I was just mm -hmm. a demo for the mm -hmm. uh, seminar. So how much, some of you know Jean, how much would you say you've lost? I would say probably would say six, eight, 60 right? to 80 percent. Right? So she's okay. had two and a half Kybella treatments. Most recently, so, a year, two years ago. Uh, the first one, it will be two no. years in August that you did the first one. The second okay. one was, was, you know, so it's a year and a half since the second mm -hmm. one. And the third one was December, so that was a, a, over a year ago as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. And so what I always tell patients who have a, a reasonable amount of fat here is you're going to end up with a pelican neck, whatever, what would you call it? And I always have that there. But it's going to look worse before it gets better. So it's a gradual process. Why? Because the injections break up with the fat cells. So they make you look really swollen. Oh, yeah. The first one was Dr. Pelican. Yes. yes. <laughs> so um, what I've changed since we first did that is the company used to initially tell you to do a grid and inject a certain amount based on the grid. I stopped doing that as did most people. Why? Because one that caused so much inflammation and not necessarily a better result. And so I'll do more f frequent injections, but of less. That way you swell less, but you have more. Uh, yeah, we know that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like we were always taught never to inject the little gels. Now we do it all the time. We didn't do that on you. No, we didn't. Well, you don't need a lot, mm -hmm. but I would do a little tiny amount here, a little tiny amount there, just to clean this up, because she doesn't need anything beyond that. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Ready? So you don't think I need anything here? No? Oh, I will. Oh, okay. Top. <laughs> <laughs> She's worried that. Uh... Do you want me on the other side? Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I forgot little pinch same thing same needle as so that's it all right then what i do maybe a tiny right here and it starts to burn and to warm up soon now we're going to focus on this area i pinch it I make you do your worst look. You know, like the opposite of your selfie, where you put your chin down as opposed to looking up. And then we measure. And it's based on pinchability, really. You don't need much. Did you lose weight? No. 
but I didn't have much. I know, I know. You didn't I have much. To clean it and up so, a little. see yeah. this area here that's not particularly well defined, but could be because she has a really nice jawline. Now we can do a little bit of that to clean that up. Whereas before we didn't do that. How does it feel? Is it starting yeah, to get a little, yeah, it, it gets a little hot, it gets warm, mm -hmm. and that's normal. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to explain to patients the first time. The first time can be a week or two. That's going to feel like it is right now? No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Just asking. No, no. See, she forgot from her first time. It's like childbirth. It well, feels first, so good that the, it's... The first time it was really on my neck, not along the yes, jawline. So exactly. It feels very differently this time. Yes, now. and it right. will. Right. Okay. Chin down. Good. Because now we have to treat what's residual. Mm -hmm. Last one. So you can wear turtlenecks, you can wear scarves. Um, if it bothers you, you could do it in the winter. Although ideally, you'd want to have these spaced apart by a month or so. Men are really good candidates, young people really good, like you've got a daughter who's just got a little bit there. Okay, chin down, let's check. But see this little line here? That's the edge of her muscle, so that's not going to get improved. So. This is going to stay, this will stay. So you have to really be educated about the fact that that's not going to go away because that's a muscle. Of this? No, yes. The would take care of this. Correct. This here in the center is very hard to take care of. You can separate the muscle, you can sew it back together. It tends to always do this. But obviously, if you tighten the skin a little bit, it helps that. So it's a trade-off. Something like this. So I think what really did actually help a lot mm -hmm. was when you did this. Mm -hmm. This whole thing lifted. Yes. You know, it mm -hmm. lifted up off my, off my neck here. Yep. So this area looks much better. Much better. Right. And you have to give it time because right. even though once this settles, the skin still shrinks. So you don't want to be unduly... Uh, right, it took, it, right, over time. Right. I did mine, what, uh, three weeks ago? I did oh, one right. syringe, probably two years ago. Right. Then I did another one about three weeks ago, and I still feel a little swelling here. Yeah. So you can do little baby doses. It's not like you, you tailor it to what you need. It's just that you don't want to do too much because then the swelling will be that much more. So are you, are you supposed to massage it? I massage it just to put the product in the right place. Okay. You don't have to massage it unless, it's, okay. unless it bothers you okay. and it gets hard. How does it feel? Is it getting okay, hot? Okay, it's just warm and yeah. It's You'll cool. see that it gets hot, red, and it actually feels warm and that means that the fat cells have been broken up and they're c releasing all of their inflammatory cytokines yeah, and the, that's the first time I could really feel a lot of action in there <laughs> well yes. the, the more you have the right. Uh, right. more release you have right. so every subsequent time is better in there. Agreed. Right. You get numbness because the nerves yeah. tend to get numb from the inflammation. Did you have numbness too? Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Not the second time, but the I first the time. time. Yeah. Only the first time. Yeah. And then you do that. <coughs> a little okay. ibuprofen. Okay. I'll go take that now. Oh. <laughs> Arnica. Yeah. 
Oh, and yeah, that's they, it. They good, right? Here. Okay. Thank you. What else can I answer for you? You guys have been great. Any questions? No? Well, have some. I Oh, Jean, I was supposed to talk about specials. Or everybody knows already. Don't worry about it. We just wanted to thank you for coming. So there's skincare and injectable specials. So if you're interested, take the information. You don't. Good. Very good. Thank you.